Welcome everybody to AdaConf, the making of. My name is Emma Liljestam, uh, which is uh, just, if you take that Twitter handle and, and put a little bit more extra letters into it, you get Emma Liljestam. Um, this is the agenda for the day. I'm gonna talk about making of AdaConf 1, 0, and 1, and what we're gonna do for AdaConf 2. And uh, at the part, next part, um, I'm going to show you the user stories and the vision, mission, values of AdaConf. Thereafter, we will turn off the live stream and do some group work and plenary discussion. And this uh, session works best with lots of questions. They could preferably be short due to uh, the video, but I'd love some uh, all during the session and not at the end. Well, also at the end. So, AdaConf uh, was conceptualized in October last year. That's some seven months ago. Um, and the idea is to have a uh, hands-on tech conference for women and trans people. Uh, one day, multiple tracked um, in Malmö, Sweden. Uh, it's going to be free of charge. Uh, we had uh, the very nice blessing of having an, a, an actual... Um, there was a, con a, a separatistic conference before us um, called Geek Girl Meetup. And this year they had decided that they didn't want to do it. And uh, we over at Food Cafe said, well, we can't have that. We must have our, our separatist uh, conference. Um, and we had basically already had all the rooms and stuff because uh, Malmö has a quite vibrant uh, stage for uh, meetups and talks already. Uh, that was really nice. Uh, that's also one of the reasons why we could pull this off in 31 days to <laughs> make 100 people come together, including speakers and workshoppers and catering and all of that. We uh, used Trello and Slack very much under, during our um, organization. Simply, uh, like how, how do you get voluntary group to stand up together and say, we want to do something, and then actually uh, get them to do uh, the things that they love to do, uh, not do the things that they think are boring, and uh, actually continuing doing what they wanted to do. Um, so for that we used, um, I, I, I'm a very big fan of different kinds of visualization systems. Um, so also on the conference, we actually had a visible scrum board with like post-its on it saying this needs to be done, uh, work in progress and done. Um, the people attending uh, were, uh, uh, we asked them to, if they want to, actually just take a post-it note for something that they felt needed, uh, needed to be done. Um, and do that thing. Um, one very big problem that we often see in, um, in organizations like this, voluntary organizations, is our bottleneck problems, uh, which you know are very classic IT problems. Uh, you have a coordinator and people feel like they have to ask for permission uh, for anything that they want to do. Um, Instead, I, we very much tried to make people feel like they could take an initiative uh, and feel confident that they understood what AdaConf was all about. And um, when they had understood that, they should be comfortable enough to simply do things and then after the fact tell, well, I, I did this thing, I think it was great, uh, what do you think? Um, we need sponsors to be able to do uh, AdaConf for free because everything that we do at Food Cafe is free. 
Um, we did not break even the first time, though. Um, and that's also a really, really nice thing, uh, a very luxurious thing that you very often don't get as um, people in um, doing voluntary work, that someone else is carrying the risk, the monetary risk for what we're doing. Uh, since they could do, um, since they could uh, carry that monetary risk, we could actually do a lot, lot of fun things for the people coming. Um, and I was the coordinator the first time. Um, I think it's probably the closest thing I'll ever get to a white wedding. Um, simply getting so many people to one place, <laughs> it's so nerve-wracking. Um, not knowing if anybody's going to show up at all, if, uh, if all those people that have said that they were going to come, it's actually going to come. That's uh, always a big issue for any meetup that I don't think that anyone really has solved yet. Um, but one of the international speakers who came, uh, she said to me, it's very, very important. Like, the, the only thing that is important is that nobody should die. Um, and nobody did die. So I would say that AdaConf Zero was very much a success. <laughs> um, since we also had only 31 days to do what we, everything we wanted to do, uh, we uh, already at the beginning set uh, a loose date for the second time that AdaConf was going to be. And this time it was going to be in Stockholm, because Food Café is both in Malmö and in Stockholm. And we thought, hey, why don't we do, do this in every city that we exist in, so that if Food Café are in 100 cities, we're going to have 100 ADA comps. Uh, that sounds nice. Um, and it was really nice to have that already decided upon, because um, getting people to want to talk and to workshop at um, AdaConf, since it was such a short time, uh, I had to work very much with my network on Twitter. And since I've been uh, on some kind of InfoSec Twitter for quite some time now, I also apparently had a very big network. I surprised myself there actually by the amount of uh, qualified women and trans people that I could just reach out to, that I was following, that, or that was already following me. Um, and the ones that couldn't come this time, they said, but we would like to come the next time when we actually have um, a four-month notice. And same thing for uh, sponsors. It's uh, Some think, well, we can't really um, we, we can't do it for the budget for Q4 2017. And then we're saying, great, then you can do it for Q1 2018, right? Um, and so I was, my co-founder, Esther, she said afterwards that she was expecting us to do maybe a one track thing uh, with some local speakers and <laughs> it turned out to be a three-track uh, conference with uh, speakers from America and UK coming in. I don't know why. It's like th this is the best, um, uh, the best confidence boost that you can ever have that you start something and someone on the other side of the Atlantic is saying, I really, really want to go there. Um, and I want to fund it myself, <laughs> even. Um, we also got some great spillover to the rest of uh, Food Café. Um, there is this... Um, I, I don't know if uh, anyone in this room already had thought it, but like, why should we have um, a conference for only women and trans people. What about all the men? Uh, they also want to do. Uh, they also want to do hands-on uh, tech, uh, a full day uh, with nice people and free giveaways and stuff. Um, and 
one good thing that came out of this is simply that since we were doing this, uh, we got uh, some really, really nice speakers to the normal food cafe where everybody was welcome. So the spillover uh, helped everybody. Uh, we also had an invisible track, and this is something that I'm really, really, really proud about. The first time that I was soldering, I was very, very intimidated by it, and I thought, this is something hard, and uh, this is something really, really cool. And then I learned it, and I was like, this is, this is the simplest thing I've ever seen. Uh, if this is so simple, what else have they lied to me about? What else is there out there that sounds super cool and super hard that isn't super cool and super, or that is super cool but not super hard? Um, this was something that I wanted all, um, all the people at EdaConf to feel as well. So everybody got to do uh, this extremely simple circuit. Uh, not in the cat ear form, but it's just, it's just a little microcontroller and some LEDs. And you can use it with Arduino. It has six soldering points. It both has uh, surface, surface mounted and uh, through with this pinhole thing. Um, it takes something like 15 minutes to do if you're a beginner. Um, and I think three-fourths three of the attendees at the first EdaConf actually did one of these. Um, it was such a joy for me to see. Um, and then we had a feedback jar at the end. Uh, change nothing, keep everything. Uh, obviously, we didn't only get this kind of uh, very nice feedback, uh, but we also got some feedback on things that we can actually work upon. Since we were only working for 31 days, we had to have a very, very strong focus on the minimally viable products and to think about not, um, not taking in too much at the same time and losing focus on what's the most important things, and instead focus on small, uh, specialized things that, that don't matter in the end. Um, but the next time, uh, we would be able to get more time to do those things, we thought. So, then we went to Stockholm, and uh, the first, time we, uh, first thing we did before we could um, and decide upon the date. Simply, I reached out to one of my biggest idols. This is like the best thing you can ever have with having your own conference, is that you have a reason to go and say to someone, hey, I think you're super cool. Would you like to talk at my meetup? Would you like to talk at my conference? And um, in many cases, they say yes. And in many cases, they say no. But every time, they are flattered. And every time you feel a little bit like, oh my god, I've been, I've been poking this person. <laughs> so this time we had oceans of time, three months. I had also started working at another firm, so I was now uh, only being a volunteer. Uh, so we had another coordinator up in Stockholm. And all of the success that we already had had made us a little bit cocky and thought, well, we can do anything. Um, and now, but now we also had to uh, rely much more on uh, things like Slack, simply because we were now a distributed team. We were uh, people down in Malmö, and we were people up in Stockholm, 700 or 800 kilometers away. Mm. Also, um, Stockholm is a bigger city. It's a little bit um, harsher for meetups. Um, in Malmö, when we have a normal meetup, uh, there's a dropout rate of maybe 10%, or sometimes it's coming, it's overfilling with 20%. Uh, 
but it's usually like if people say that they're gonna come, they usually come. Uh, in Stockholm, it's the other way around that about 50% of the people don't come, even when we from promise them free food and beer. Um, so we uh, had to keep that very much in, uh, in mind. I don't think, I, I'm not sure that anyone have heard this, but one of the reasons why there are so few women uh, talking at tech conferences is simply because uh, there are no qualified women to do that. Um, I wish that's what, that was true because then we would have had a much lesser problem uh, with our call for papers, where we got way too many people, <laughs> way too many qualified people that we couldn't take in. Uh, that's a very much of a luxury problem. And that's also something that one has to take into account, being a person doing this for fun and for passion, turning people down. Um, that's not a fun thing to do. I don't want to do that. Uh, but we had to do that. Um, this time, uh, Ada Kampf won. Also, we got we had less volunteers, um, but for some reason that uh, actually worked out really well. Uh, we had a really really nice venue at the uh, Internet Foundation in Sweden, uh, overlooking a uh, beautiful canal, and it was a beautiful weather outside. It was minus degrees, but. On the inside, it was very hot and nice. Um, and we actually broke even uh, when it came to sponsors, which is a huge thing. Um, so you can see here, for example, we have um, Katarina from uh, GitHub and her Bosnia um, doing a three-hour workshop on Git. They came from San Francisco for this. Uh, Imagine the confidence boost. Uh, we have one of the DNS uh, key bearers, uh, Anne-Marie Eklund Lövinder, uh, who is also the chief information officer of uh, uh, Internet Foundation in Sweden, that honored us with our talk. Uh, we, we had a really, really nice lineup. Uh, one problem that we had is that the day before we, we, we found out that the venue that we were going to have, uh, they were going to jackhammer the floors um, in the venue. Uh, so we had to, to switch around a little bit there. Um, there I felt very much that it was really nice that someone else was doing the coordination um, so that I didn't have to freak out about this. Um, also, the person who did the coordination simply didn't tell us until she had solved the problem, which is also a very, very nice thing to do, because why should everybody be freaked out about something when only one can be freaked out about it and fix it? Um, so the soldering workshop, uh, we couldn't do as an invisible track, uh, but we had to do that five stairs below uh, the original place. Uh, which was a bit of a shame, uh, simply because of the fire alarm and stuff. We didn't want to, to uh, have uh, the local uh, firearms coming by. Uh, but we did uh, have 3D printing this time too. And I just love the ambience that you get from having uh, these kinds of stuff. Um, I've been taking a lot of inspiration from going back and forth to Germany for a couple of years and uh, uh, seeing you guys uh, around cows, uh, how you organize things, how, how you self-organize things. Um, I have seen that that's something that uh, the Swedes think is kind of strange, uh, especially this thing with the Agile board that is visible to the attendees. Uh, is something that people are, have been really um, happy about, and uh, but very surprised about, uh, because that simply doesn't exist. That we simply say, "Hey, you don't have to help, but you're allowed to help," and this is how you do it. Um, so, next Ada Conf uh, will be in October. 
Uh, our call for paper closes on the 15th of August. And um, we, we accept any kind of talks or workshops that is on hands-on tech or anything that you can uh, bring with you um, to work on Monday. Um, we do not accept talks or workshops about diversity. We do not talk, we don't uh, let up space in rooms like this to talk about something like feminism or uh, how, why it's hard to be a woman in tech. Basically because everybody who is there already knows this or knows what's hard and what's not hard. Uh, this is also something that is naturally going to happen, that people are going to talk about this. Uh, but we say that we, um, we do not talk about diversity at AdaConf. We do diversity. So therefore, we accept all kinds of talks or workshops that are hands-on tech. Um, so I've been looking into, we were looking into a lot, what kind of vision do we want? I've been using two kinds of methods. One is called the vision, mission values, OOP I think it's called. And uh, I also simply like using user stories. Um, I'm just gonna read them to you. As an attendee, I feel safe and welcome. We have a code of conduct, uh, we also uh, very much uh, try to make everybody feel included. Um, we also, at the end, asked simply uh, I, um, whether people felt like that. And of course, if you're standing in the, a room like this and I say, do you feel welcome? Uh, you're not likely to say no. Um, but then we also had uh, feedback jars there you can give anonymous feedback. Um, as an attendee, I feel empowered to learn or deepen a skill. This is also something I uh, ask at the end, and everybody uh, raised their hand about that. So that's really nice. As an attendee, I feel welcome to contribute to the conference. Um, it's a common misconception that you can just go to a conference and be passive, um, and then you learn something. And that's often not the case, but simply uh, doing good questions, meeting up with uh, new people, networking with people. Um, that's what makes a conference precious. And then the people who come and give up their free time um, and not only go to talks, uh, these people we really, really need to uh, care for. So as a volunteer, I feel like I do something meaningful. Uh, as a volunteer, I feel heard and that it's possible to do the things that I'm good at. Or uh, as a volunteer, I feel I heard and that it's possible to do, to use my superpowers. That's maybe a better way of saying it. As a volunteer, I do and inform rather than ask for permission. This is something that is really, really hard, especially in a Swedish context of people that generally are introverted and are never learned really to speak to other people. Uh, we are very, very afraid of offending people. Um, but anyway, that's something that we're trying to achieve. Um, as a speaker, I feel welcome, or a workshopper. Um, I actually, we actually simply use uh, speakers and workshoppers as volunteers as well. and. Um, they seem to like that. Like, everybody is welcome to not do that, of course. But most speakers and workshoppers have uh, volunteered to help. Then we have a user story for sponsors. And it's a work in progress. We don't know, actually. <laughs> but for some reason, it has been working anyway. Um, as a coordinator, I work a reasonable amount uh, during the EDACOMP Zero. In Malmö, where I was the coordinator, uh, they had to force me out of the room the day before. 
uh, and said, Emma, you actually do need to go to sleep. You have to understand that we have this Agile board. We already know. You have already given us all the information that we need, and you're not going to change anything by being here. The best thing you can do is go home and sleep. Uh, so I was forced to do that. Um, and as a coordinator, I also need to spread information about needs and deadlines uh, via Agile boards like Trello or uh, the visual board on site. And as a team, we celebrate and cherish, cherish each other's superpowers. And I hope that I will define what superpowers is at the end. Uh, so I also made this document. Um, vision. EdaConf is a full-day conference for women and or trans people. We do not talk about diversity. We act diversity by sharing skills and competence that have re relevance for everyday life as IT and tech people. Uh, diversity is on the meta level. I think I've gone through that already. Um, we can talk about that at the end as well. And how do we want to implement this vision? Uh, an ADACOMP event uh, always contains talks, workshop, and an invisible track, uh, track of tangible DIY tech. So that has been the soldering or uh, a 3D printing. Uh, ADACOMP events are vegan friendly, uh, basically vegan with vegetarian options on top. Uh, ADACOMP events are ideally free. They have always been free, and they will probably be free the next time as well. Uh, also including a free lunch and a free swag bag. And at the first one, I even gave away a, a printed book, uh, which was uh, financial, fi financially maybe not the best thing that we could have done. Uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, at least. Um, speakers do not get paid. Uh, that's also a core uh, thing for Foo Cafe, that no one um, we have been doing it for in five years or something like that. We've been doing 1,900 uh, meetups, and no one has ever gotten paid for anything. Uh, people come because they want to. Uh, we also try to uh, not uh, buy into the idea of the rock star developers or the rock star talkers. We people should come for the content, um, and because the speaker is good, not because the speaker is cool. So how do we implement the vision and the mission? We also have values. Um, AdaConf has an agile organizational structure based on our harvesting volunteers' superpowers. We define superpowers as what is ridiculously easy for you, but hard for most. All people have superpowers, but most people are not aware of what theirs is. Uh, this is something that was very important for me because I, had, I, I really have no clue what my superpowers are, and most of you also don't. Uh, simply because I, I think that I'm comparatively well and good at uh, InfoSec and IT security, but since I am comparatively well at that, I also talk to other people that are very good at, uh, at InfoSec and IT security, and therefore I do not understand that this is very easy for me because I only look at the other people who also do this easily. Um, I think being a part of an, of an existing structure uh, as we were uh, at AdaConf Zero was very, very good. I, I hate talking to sponsors. I'm also I'm very Swedish, so I really hate talking to people at all. Uh, you can't tell. And I'm thankfully uh, working that way as much as possible. Um, but I really, really hate talking to sponsors. I really, really hate, um, well, I, I like getting a yes, but I hate getting a maybe. Um, so uh, I got very much help from a salesperson inside uh, the Food Cafe organization. Uh, so every time that I got something that I needed to do, I used his superpower. Um, that is, he's really good at selling. He is really good at feeling what the other person is thinking and not being pushy, being nice, and so on. 
so I would simply discuss with him for seven minutes what the mail that I got said. Uh, and after that, I felt like I had the power to actually do um, uh, send the mail uh, or send the answer. And then um, I didn't have to build up on all those not very nice things. Like, for example, if I was, uh, I was talking to one potential sponsor and they gave us a very, very, very low bid. Um, and I felt a bit offended by getting a low bid. Um, but since it wasn't a no, I definitely had to answer it, yeah, because that's what courtesy says. Um, so I got a lot of help with that. Um, also, I think that making websites is boring. Um, and sometimes we feel like uh, the golden rule is something that is very important to apply, that uh, anything that another person is doing for, uh, like, uh, treat the other person like you want to be treated. So, if I would use a golden rule, I would say, I don't like making websites. That means that no one else likes to make work websites, and I don't want anyone else to do something boring. Therefore, I should do the website. Uh, instead, I <laughs> just wrote in Slack and I say, hey, I think websites are really, really boring. Is there a website ninja out there that can, can do this? And within five minutes, there's a website ninja uh, who can do this task. And they, instead of me banging my head against the wall and procrastinating for eight hours, uh, she does it for five minutes and then it's done. Um, the superpowers is something really, really, really cool to, to try to work with. Uh, next value. Any action or task that is in line with the vision, mission, or values can be executed without asking a coordinator in advance. Instead, inform afterwards. Uh, it's something very important. It's kind of hard to work like this because we're not used to it. We're not used to trying to get a flat hierarchical structure. Um, I think if we're going to have a flat hierarchical structure, it's actually very important to actually have a non-flat um, hierarchical structure also, uh, because sometimes there will be a conflict, and those conflicts need to be solved. But, um, but most conflicts should be solved um, as soon as possible, or maybe not exist at all. Um, next one. We test in production and continuously deploy. Uh, I said uh, during EDACOM0 that this is an open beta test. Uh, that's, that also made me feel a bit better about uh, any, anything that possibly could go not the way I planned, simply because we had so short time to do this. Um, we just try and do things instead of uh, going on for a very long time and, and thinking about doing things. Uh, that usually works a lot better. Uh, the next one might seem a bit provo provoking. Uh, cis men are welcome to contribute in supportive roles, i.e. administrative work, sponsorship, advisory roles, catering, or childcare. Um, the thing is, we don't want to be provocative. We really don't want to be that. Um, just like a gay couple kissing on the street don't want to uh, be provoking or be something cool or something special. They just want to be normal. And that's the thing. We also just want to be normal. We ha want to have one day of uh, feeling like we're major the majority and feeling that we can empower our, ourselves and um, get to network with new people. Um, and there are a lot of, of cis men that want to help us with that. And so they are welcome to do that in these kinds of roles. Another very important value is, of course, we do not sell talk or workshop slots to sponsors simply because we want to have a good content. Without a good content, uh, a brand will be absolutely nothing. Um, that said, we 
did get sponsorship by uh, a um, password manager company, and I did a workshop on password management. And the reason for that uh, to happen is simply because uh, I'm an InfoSec person. <laughs> so um, it wasn't because they were uh, sponsoring that we did things on, um, on IT security. Actually, they didn't know that I was going to do a workshop on password security. Uh, they funded us anyway. So they got to know it afterwards. Finally, this ask and offer. Don't be afraid to ask for help or offer help. Um, so at AdaConf Zero, at the end, we said, you're very welcome to help us clean up. And uh, it took 30 minutes to clean, clean up, um, which was really, really cool. Um, and I think you in the German scene, you're used to this. This is nothing strange. Uh, but in Sweden, this was really strange. Um, and something that we got praised for. So now we can uh, say goodbye to the video stream um, and get over to uh, the workshop part. Um, to reiterate, a superpower is something that is easy for you and that most other think is hard. Um, so I would like you uh, in groups to think about what is the superpower of a friend of yours and what might your superpower possibly be. Um, another very important thing that we did at AdaConf was a minimal viable product. What's the core functionality of the meetup that you would want to do? Um, you can also define user stories as an organizer, I blah, 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 as a participant, I blah, 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 as a sponsor, I blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you can make, define a one sentence description, um, uh, an elevator pitch of a thing that you might want to do. So, like for example, AdaConf is a one day hands-on tech conference for non-sysmen. <laughs>